Hello there everybody, Sam Strains here, welcome back to the railway and welcome back to another review, this time of a Backman Spectrum locomotive. So in the past I have looked at one or two American Backman locos, but the ones I've looked at have all been sort of train set standard stuff, I think that's the most polite way of putting it. Yeah, they weren't that fantastic. If you want to check out one of those videos, I'll put a link up there for you. In the comments of those videos, a lot of people suggested that I should try some of the Backman Spectrum range, which I think is a bit like the Hornby Railways range over here in the UK, it's supposed to be a bit more premium. So I bought a loco off my friend Jonathan, so thank you very much for that one Jonathan, I bought this a long time ago, it was second hand but I serviced it up probably about a year ago and I've not looked at it since, the idea there being to keep this as fresh as possible for the actual review, and it is this, it's obviously a very anonymous looking box, but it is an HO scale Russian decapod, obviously Deca they're suggesting 10, I'm sure you can imagine what that will involve, so I'm going to get this out today, let's find out if it's on par with Backman's UK range of stuff, and for the money, is it worth it? Now, the price for these is crazy. The RRP is over $500. I believe that is for the DCC sound version before you all blow a gasket. I think the retail price for the DCC sound models is $350 or something. I will just double check these figures for you. Uh, because obviously I'm not that familiar with dollars. Right, so it's available for $329, this particular model, with the DCC sound, which translates to £267. And if we take away the approximate cost of a decoder, which is about $100, that leaves £186 for the loco, which is about the same as Backman's UK pricing, I would say. Um, a little bit on the expensive side, but could be justifiable if the model meets a high enough standard. So let's get this out and find out, shall we? Looking forward to this one. So even the box suggests that this is quite an elite model. I quite like the box, actually. It looks good, doesn't it? Uh, it's a bit of a pest to film, obviously, because it's jet black and it just sucks in all the light. But yeah, it looks good. It says the Master Railroader series on the front there. So, well, I'd hope it would be for the price. Let's put it that way, I guess, and leave it there. Let me show you the end of the box then, because there is a sticker on there. Again, quite hard to film with the gold, but it's item number 81709. It's an HO scale 2100 Russian decapod and it is in the ATSF livery. And that might not make a lot of sense. Obviously, if it's Russian, why is it in the ATSF? Well, all will be explained in a little while. For now, though, there's not very much to see on the box, and I am being careful not to flip this upside down because the packaging isn't the best uh, inside. So let's lift the lid and take a look. So, as you can see, uh, I think this is second, well, it is second hand, obviously, so I don't know whether I've got any paperwork inside here. We will find out. As you can see, there's the loco and there's the tender. We'll get those in just a second. There is a bag here, though, that I don't believe I remember looking inside, so let's see what's in there. Okay, well, it looks like it's just a spare set of bogies for the tender, which is interesting. Um, yeah, no idea why that would be. Um, are they that bad that they're going to break? <laughs> I hope not. Maybe they're alternative, maybe they have different details on them. I'm not too sure, but I will keep those safe uh, so that they don't get damaged. Okay, well, let me just take off the whole top piece, that might be best. And we'll take a look at the tender first, shall we? Okay, let's show you that then. So, yeah, as you can see, number 2554 there. Yeah, there are similarities, really, between the Backman models that we get over here in the UK. The coal looks quite similar. Uh, but, yeah, it looks like a nice tender. You can see we do have some picking up being done by the tender there, which is good. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the level of detail there appears to be very much on par with Backman's top-of-the-range stuff over here in the UK. Uh, so, yeah, that looks very good. Obviously, though, you didn't come here to see the tender, did you? So, let's get the loco out very carefully mind you because it is quite a fragile thing if I remember correctly and there it is and yeah if you think back to my Backman Prairie video there's quite a few differences between that and this it must be said this looks much much better first of all it's very very heavy indeed and I can tell the running board here if it's even called a running board I guess the walkway or whatever you want to call it uh, that is made of metal and the model feels good as a result it's nice and cold in the hand and you can also see there's quite a lot of detail to this, most of it separately fitted. It looks very impressive indeed. So we'll take a close look at that in a second. For now, though, let me hold the tender next to it for you so you can see what it looks like. As you can see, the tender needs to be plugged in to the loco, so I'm not going to do that until I'm ready to run it. 
but hopefully that gives you an idea of how this is going to look. Yeah, very exciting stuff actually. Maybe this will be a super duper detailed, really, really good running model. Well, I hope so, like I say, for the money. Anyway, first of all, if you're wondering more about the Russian decapods and how they got those names, here's a little bit of history. So, despite being known as Russian decapods, many of these locos, in fact I believe most of them, didn't actually make it to Russia as a result of the revolution in 1917. Instead, the locos were used by American railroad companies to fill some of the gaps left in their fleets following the First World War. The locos were built by Baldwin in 1918 and featured Walshirt's valve gear and 180 psi boilers. I don't know if this applies to the version I've got right here, but I know some of the locos destined for Russia were even designed for a different gauge. So before they could be used in the United States, they had to be re-gauged. So you can just imagine what a problem this was. Anyway, unfortunately, only two 210 decapods remain in operation in the US today, and only one of them is an ex-Russian one, and that's number 1630, I believe, if you want to look that one up. goes. All right, so there it is then, the Russian decapod by Backman, up close and personal for you, and this thing looks really, really cool, doesn't it? Obviously, because I collect mainly British stuff, for obvious reasons, this looks completely different to the locos I normally collect and review. And as much as I do like this, and uh, I think I'm going to really enjoy getting this running, I have to say, if this was a British model and I'd paid 180 odd quid for it or whatever, and that's the price I calculate without any decoders fitted or anything like that, I'd be struggling to understand how such a cost was justified for quite a few reasons. First of all, the decoration is obviously quite simple. I mean, we don't have any complex lining or anything like that that you'd expect to have on a model that expensive. Obviously, that's no criticism on the accuracy because if they made this in a sort of SECR lined green, it would look a bit stupid, wouldn't it? But the fact is the decoration is basic and so there's no major cost involved there. Also, the cab, as you can see, we don't have any painted details inside the cab or anything like that. And on a British model, obviously, that wouldn't go down too well, would it? Some of the detailing's pretty basic as well. As you can see, we have quite mismatched looking whistles. Some of them are made of metal, some of them are made of plastic. I'm not too sure why that would be, but they don't look that consistent. And we have a few details, such as the bell, for instance, which don't look that great. It's still quite clearly made of plastic. It's not as bad as on the Prairie, of course, but it still doesn't look all that convincing. And there are a few areas where the model could do with a bit of extra finesse. For instance, these wires, you've just got these multicolored wires which poke out of the loco and plug into the tender. Obviously, that is not dreadfully convincing, is it, if you've got these multicolored wires sticking out. Don't get me wrong, though, for the money, you do get quite a lot of detail. For example, all of the detail on the side of the boiler here does appear to be separately fitted. So you've got these metal handrails, all sorts of pipes, loads of components fitted around the running board. It is a very, very detailed model, don't get me wrong. And some areas of it do have quite a lot of finesse. You can see the centers of the driving wheels here have all been covered up. They don't have naked axles on display, which is good. Same thing goes with the front uh, pony wheels. That's really, really good. We do have crew fitted to the cab, which is a really nice feature. Backman UK locos don't tend to have that sort of thing, so that's a plus. The cab, I must say, is a little bit loose. It doesn't fit onto the model very well, which, again, just makes it feel a little bit on the cheap and nasty side for a model that is obviously quite expensive, at least by British standards. I do love the amount of daylight between the wheel set and the upper boiler of the Loco. It just looks amazing, doesn't it? And it actually makes you wonder, how do they drive the wheel set? Well... It's actually belt driven, I know, it's crazy stuff, but yeah, there's a belt that descends from around the firebox area and uh, drives a small gearbox, I believe, uh, which is a bit of an odd thing to do. Don't think it's one of those belt drives that's gonna slip. I think there are teeth on the belt which stop that from happening. But yeah, either way, it's, it's, it's unorthodox, I'll give it that. Take a look at the smoke box door. Now that does look great. As you can see, we have the running number applied to that as well as a working lamp, which I believe is working, which is good to see. And the pilot area looks great as well. We have one of those knuckle couplers fitted, which is good. Are they KDs, I believe? And there's all sorts of different metal handrails pre-fitted around there, which is good to see. The tender is pretty similar, really. It's relatively basic, but it certainly looks the part. As you can see, we have the running numbers nicely applied on the side there, 2554, looking good. Lots of riveted detail on the side of the tender, which is great. We also have a relatively realistic looking coal load as well. It's not a die cast piece, I don't think, as the Backman branch line stuff tends to be. And I'm not sure if it's removable or not, although as you can tell there, it does look quite convincing. 
The underframe looks all right as well. As you can see, there's nothing in the way of many separately fitted parts, but there are quite a lot of molded details on the bogies, and the wheels are indeed metal, which is nice to see from a Backman US Loco for a change. And as I already said, they do pick up, which is great. Around the back, you can see we have more printed details and a separately fitted ladder, as well as some metal handrails and another, I think, KD coupler on the back there. I should really have looked that up before the review started. I forgot about that. So as you can see, overall, it's a very well detailed model. Some aspects of the detailing are very, very impressive. However, not all, as I've said, and that is the main problem with the price, I would say. However, that is not the complete story because if this is one of the best runners I've ever seen, maybe we could forgive it some of those issues. So let's get it down onto the track. We'll talk about the mechanism and we'll give it its first proper test. Okay, so there she is down onto the track, ready for the first ever test, and I'm looking forward to this one. So I've put the Loco and Tender together, which was a faff. Uh, because the Loco has lights in it, you've actually got two plugs going from Loco to Tender, which is a bit of a faff. It's obviously very conspicuous as well. Because they've used multicolored wire, it is very noticeable, even when the Loco is just parked as it is now, which is a little bit of a shame. Next up, the Loco is pretty heavy. The Loco and Tender weigh in at 375 grams, which is pretty heavy. That's heavier than the Backman Patriot, which is quite a bit bigger than this. Despite that, though, the pulling force isn't that great. It pulls at 0.28 newtons, which is only enough for this to haul around 19 coaches on straight and level track. And that's actually less than my Backman C1 Atlantic, which only has four driving wheels. This has 10, and it's considerably more light-footed than that. The mechanism is also a bit of a mixed bag. It does have quite a lot of pickups. I believe the whole thing, Loco and Tender, have 12 pickups on them, uh, four on the Tender, and I think eight on the Loco. So not all wheels pick up, although obviously 12 pickups, six per line is pretty good, I would say. It's not entirely clear which motor this runs. I haven't been able to actually access the motor due to the slightly strange uh, arrangement inside this one. I would assume it is the standard Backman three-pole motor, although obviously I'm not going to penalise for the three-pole motor if I haven't actually seen it, but I assume that's what it is. If you remove the base, you can see we don't have any proper bearings on the wheel set, which obviously for a loco that costs so much is completely unexcusable. Uh, at least the bearings are not square though, they are round slots, which is good to see. And you also have a few sprung axles as well, which is quite a nice feature. So the mechanism is a bit of a mixed bag. Now let's actually get onto the performance then and test the slow speed. So I'm going to set the direction. Let's give this a little bit of a try. Here we go. Turning it up slowly. Like I say, it also has a belt drive, which is really odd, but it seems to work all right. So there we go. As you can see, the slow speed is pretty good. It's a little bit on the jerky side. It has been running, I should say, so this is typical. In fact, not only has it been running, but I've serviced it as well. Yeah, the slow speed is very good, actually. It's, like I say, a tiny bit jerky, but it is very, very slow, which is great to see. It is a shame the Loco is so underpowered, though, because a Loco this size, you'd probably want to load up, wouldn't you, and haul quite a lot. Yeah, it's not very powerful, and if you sort of load it up, you can see how much that kills the torque of the wheel set. Look at that. Let it go. It goes nice and fast. Load it up. It kills the speed. Ready? Look at that. No power to it whatsoever. It's really quite disappointing. Anyway, let's go a bit faster. As you can see, it's handling the express points with no problems whatsoever because it does have quite a lot of pickups, which is really, really good. Right, let me bring it into the shop then again, and then I'll show you what I've got set up. So I've just set up a few hopper wagons. I know they're not strictly that suitable, but they do have the same couplings, and they are quite modern and easy to haul, which is good. So let's back the Loco up and get her coupled to them then, shall we? Whoops, wrong way. And the Loco does have lights, as I say. It's got one on the front and one on the back of the tender, uh, which I will show you later on as it gets running. Right, let's go and try the coupling. Oops, steady does it. Yeah, I think we've got it. Okay, I've pushed it back a bit further so that you might be able to see the lamp on the front when I set it to forwards. Can you see that? Maybe. It's not very bright, unfortunately, on DC, although, of course, they are chiefly designed for DCC, which is fair enough. Anyway, let's set that to about medium speed. There we go. And I'll show you what else I'm going to be running alongside her. I have coming up next, not an American Loco, but a Canadian one. But I've picked this one because I want to show you... Um, well, let me tell you, it's a Mahano Loco, so it's very cheap, very inexpensive. But I would say the performance is better from this. Uh, the slow speed crawl is amazing. I have reviewed this, so if you want to check it out, you can do. The slow speed crawl is a little bit better. And if I set this to a sort of moderate speed, you can see that if I put some resistance to it, 
the wheel set continues to spin this loco is quite the puller and the backman one isn't if i did that with the backman as you saw a minute ago it just seizes up it just stops it doesn't have the power to overcome my fingers and then on the inside line i do have another backman and i just love this one and you might as well uh, because it is the berkshire the same engine used in the polar express uh, again, it's not got a great mechanism, it's pretty underpowered for what it is, but as you can see it has got some box fans, or box cars, as you call them in America. <laughs> Hopefully those are going to stay on the track. Um, but anyway, enjoy the running session, see which other American locos you can spot. Here we go, we've got the Canadian National 6060, which is its name more specifically. Just waiting for the Decapod now, which I have to say is a fair runner. The performance isn't bad, it's reasonably smooth, quite quiet, it's just very underpowered. Even a gradient is enough to slow it down, even if it's not pulling anything. It is a shame that they're not more powerful than they are, especially given the massive price. Those Mahano Locos are workhorses though, very, very heavy, good pullers. And here comes the Bankman, which is obviously noticeably faster coming down Gordon's Hill here by quite a long way. So yeah, the performance leaves a bit to be desired, however, it's a great looking model, isn't it? It just looks fantastic. Really glad to own it, actually. It's cool. So before I give you my ratings, let me know in the poll, how would you rate this out of five? And we'll see if you agree with me. Yeah, it's not terrible, but I'm sure you'll agree it's not the best either. I must say though, it's such a cool looking model, easily my coolest American loco I'd say, maybe with the exception of the Berkshire. Tell you what, the uh, Canadian National here is uh, stealing the show slightly, I better go and check on the Berkshire, see if she's still running okay. Yeah, she's fine as you can tell. Nice run of that one. So here are my ratings then for the Russian Decapod by Backman. I have to say the level of detail was pretty impressive. It was a very complex model actually, which I wasn't necessarily expecting. Loads of finely separately fitted parts, which overall brought the model together to look really quite impressive. It was lacking in a few areas, such as the cab, which was a little bit naff, wasn't it? But overall, I would say the detail is very good. Overall, the performance is pretty reasonable as well. It's not the best slow crawler in the world, and the motor speed does seem to fluctuate a little bit. But overall, it is a good performer, so I've given it four stars. Yes, it was better than expected, once again, given the mechanism. The pulling power is where this falls down, though, because it's a very heavy loco at 375 grams. That's the weight loco and tender. And, of course, it's got 10 driving wheels, and yet it's only able to manage around 19 coaches, which is about half of what my Hornby Tornado can do with its six driving wheels. Yeah, it's very underpowered, and the motor speed does slow down if you load the loco up, which is a bit of a shame. The mechanism, then, isn't that great. I've given it three and a half stars. It is pretty heavy. It does have quite a lot of pickups on board. Not as many as it could have, but... I don't think the pickups are a problem at all. No bearings on the wheel set, which is a shame, and I do suspect that this runs Backman's typical three-pole motor, although I can't prove that, so I haven't penalised for that. Yeah, it's okay. I've given it three and a half, sort of middle of the road. Same thing goes with the quality. It's reasonably good, the quality. There's quite a bit of die cast. The assembly's not too bad at all, but obviously the mechanism lets it down a little bit. We've got a few loose parts, such as the cab, and those wires are a little bit of a mess as well. It looks like they've just been flung on without too much thought. Overall, though, the quality's not too bad. I think the biggest issue is value for money. As I say, $329 for this is about £267. That's with DCC sound, though. If you take off the $100 for the DCC, sound we're still talking 186 pounds for this that's quite a lot i think for a loco whose mechanism is like this one is um yeah not the best so i've given it just two star overall that is 6.68 out of 10 not the best score in the world although i have given worse of course let's put it into the logbook there there we go 21st just above the backman 43xx and below the hornby northern bell yes i like it but i reckon it should have been better for what it cost so I'd say this is pretty much in line with what people have told me about the Backman Spectrum stuff. Very expensive, but generally not too bad. Um, and I'd agree with that. That's not to say I don't like it at all. Uh, I think it's a great model. Really going to enjoy running it, in fact. But clearly, you can do better from other companies, and I'd love to try some. Broadway Limited Imports, is it? I'd love to try a Loco from them. What do you reckon, then? Are these Southern coaches a complete and utter illegal travesty, or do you not mind them too much? <laughs> 
I don't know whether some people are going to really hate that or not. So there you have it then folks, another American review out of the blue. Yeah, I enjoyed that actually, uh, I always do in fact, it's just really nice to get away from British stuff, not that you need to, but uh, it's just nice for a change really, isn't it? <laughs> oh, nearly said something naughty there. No, I do love British stuff of course, but it's nice to see something different once in a while. So I hope you agree, if you don't, don't worry, I won't be doing this too often, I'll be back to British next time, but I hope you enjoyed it for a change just like I did. So thanks for your time, thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one. Cheers, everybody. Take care.